What's the crack now? Oh, no much. Yourself? Nah, just busy-ish. <laughs> <laughs> I started photography maybe three years ago now. Um, just as a hobby, not anything too serious. Just I used to play football um, and got injured through that and just had spare time. So I thought, I'm a, I'm a graphic designer, same as yourself, or what? Um, <laughs> yeah. I, so it kind of just came with that type of thing. I just kind of got th- into it through that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where it started and just didn't know anything about photography. Still don't know, well, as much as you put it that way. <laughs> um, I, I don't, I'm the biggest bluffer going, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. Like <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And I, the reason I started this channel was I wanted to get out of my comfort zone completely. I hate being in front of the camera. I'm not the greatest speaker, um, but I just wanted to start something that I could learn from, but hopefully other people can see it and maybe pick some things up from it. Um, like I'm not going to go into any settings or anything like that. It's just more sort of you and your journey and why you started and that type of thing. So the first question is just, why and sort of when you started photography? Uh, similar to similar to yourself, you know, graphic designer. Um, and I was getting frustrated with graphic design at the time. And there was a couple, there was a couple of things as well. Like you know, I was like, I've been playing drums for years. Uh, yeah. Started playing drums when I was fourteen. Like you know, so when I would go and do the odd freelance gig and stuff, you know, I'd hear an awful lot about um, the area that I'm from. So I'm I'm literally halfway between. Dublin and Belfast on the border in a town called Dundalk in County Loud. So it's home of the the Coors would be the most famous person we have we have ever like you know and I wouldn't mind it like you know they're from the town I've 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 seen Andrea once I met Jim a couple of times and I've never seen any of the rest of them but I knew their dad because a girl I went to college with <laughs> used to do um, but uh, yeah I just I, I got into it because I I did a time lapse video with a GoPro. So I had a whole set of GoPros. I had about six or seven GoPros yeah. to video myself as a drummer to get work because I wanted because all my friends are full-time musicians. They're all right. full-time musicians. All the right the right are session musicians who play with like Shane Filing and that, or they're um, full-time wedding uh, musicians right. as well. And, and and in some cases, actually, both of them they, some of them do both. You know, when right. when they're not out touring, they're at home uh, doing pub gigs and, and weddings. And I've I've played with loads of them. And uh, some of them, you know, are complete bluffers. How they got the job, I have no idea. But that's, <laughs> that's another story. But um, yeah, it was just a, I just got sick of hearing how how rough of an area I come I come from, and because yeah. uh, I had connections to the IRA back in the troubles. And uh, I just wanted to showcase that it was not like that at all. Yeah. So I had when I had the half dozen GoPro cameras, uh, I ended up actually getting hired by bands to come and record them and do live recordings because I could set up multiple angles, like you know, one on the guitar, one on the drums, vocals, and whatever to get there. And then you know, so I got a bit of work from that. So I had a bit of experience with that, with the video editing and all that there, and even through the graphic design. But what got me really into photography was I spent six months doing this time lapse just showcase and Dundalk and everything around it. Um, and the locals had never really seen a time lapse before. Mm-hmm. They weren't really overly done. You'd see them in like House of Cards. House of Cards was big at the time. Yeah. And you wouldn't really pass much remarks about it. But when you see it locally, that a local person did this, it just went boom. Yeah. And it, yeah, it went viral, 25,000, 30,000 views over a weekend. Uh, in the paper and everything out there and I had photographers contacting me going stop wasting your time on GoPros go get yourself a DSLR yeah. um, and we, we had just, the house I'm in now at the minute we had just bought this house right. so we had started we were just trying to get um, we were trying to get pricing back from builders to actually go and do the renovations of this house so we were just we were we didn't like, you know, at the time we didn't know but we were just about to step into a six month renovation just <laughs> got it down. and so this was a garage at the time and yeah, I was getting links to adverts.ie is what we use over here for buying secondhand photography gear. And uh, I got it. I got it. I knew by looking at it, I was just like, oh, this is, it was a Canon 650D, 
40 mil f2.8 pancake, I had a 85 mil f1.8, I had the kit lens, and I was just like, I had a bag, I had a car, you know, I had a strap. I, I think the only thing he didn't come with is a tripod, right? And I was just like, that's a great deal, that's a great deal. So I bought it, sold all the lenses, <laughs> and bought the lenses I actually wanted. <laughs> <laughs> so like I had the lens now I did hold on to them lenses for a little while when I say a little while probably about three weeks yeah. and then I sold them all because I knew I wanted to get the landscape photography I knew I needed a wide angle lens and I researched it and that's a problem with me I'm just so when you put me down I'm like tunnel vision it's just yeah. you know and I'd already spent time on YouTube um, learning Lightroom because I would have used Lightroom for the time lapse so I knew that you could you could do it that way so yeah. um, so I had a little bit of experience in, in that regard so I was just doing all the research. So lenses was just, you know, was just the next thing. to Kina 11 to 16 and just got absolutely hooked on it. Um, I think I started, I think I started posting on my, on my photography page within three months, two or three months. Right. So it was January 2016. And by March I was posting photos. So that's think, basically five years then, is it? Probably. Just over five years now, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, did you think when you started that you would be doing it full time or was it just more a hobby to like begin with and just see where it went no i had no intentions for it to be full time yeah. at all uh it was only it's only when i re it's only when i released the book I, I had a i made a point of it that i didn't want it to go full time right i had a point of it yeah. uh, and everyone was like going oh you know like they're all like your stuff looks professional yeah and i and i still say it as well like professional is a mindset so if you yeah. think you know, you want it to, to the, if you want it to be that standard, you'll get there and you'll look more professional if you're really critical of yourself, you know. And the fact that I'm a musician means that I'm overcritical as it is. Yeah. So we just, you know, because like musicians are never happy. Like I have, I'm only after taking, the, I'm only after dismantle the drum, the drum kit yesterday. Yeah. It's up, I'd be practicing every day. I've microphone set up every day so I could practice, you know, with, with the mic, with the mics yeah. on it because you get out of habit, you can clip them. Because you know, I'm not totally professional at drums, but I had I had all hopes during lockdown to have loads of drum cover stuff for my Instagram page, and I just was never happy with anything I produced. And I was just like, no, nope, not good enough. No, not good enough. And I've truthful friends who I sent my stuff on to, and they said it too. They were like, ah, wouldn't put that up. Wouldn't put that up. That's not. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good enough. Yeah. And I'm like, well, yeah. And they're the same. They're the same guys. I I send my YouTube videos. So I don't send me. I don't send my photos to them. Yeah. But my YouTube videos do get sent to them, and it's more because of the audio, because uh, these guys are like top end sound engineers. But yeah, no, I have a I have a whole I have a whole um, if you want to call it like backroom of lads that I know that I can send stuff to, and they'll cut the BS and uh, they'll get straight to it. And if anyone ever hears the 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 feedback that I get, you know. Like, you don't want to be a soft sell one of these people. You don't want to be even even with me as well. If you're if you're if you're in any way like you know a little bit soft about things, yeah. don't ask for my honest opinion because I yeah. just tell it. That's how I've grown up. I've always yeah. grown up. My uncles are are all like that. You know what I mean? And they're quite uh, they're quite direct. And I think you need it, but there's too many people out there aren't willing to listen to it. I am. Yeah. It's because it it benefits you. Yeah. All right. The feelings may be hurt, but get over it. Because as long as it's constructive, yeah. it's not constructive now. You know, give them, give them the uh, slap, and then tell them, right, okay, you've had your, you've had your fun. Now get to the point. Where is the constructive stuff? So you've yeah. told me everything that's bad. How can I make it better? Yeah. And once I tell you that, and you get over your ego, you know, you'll, you'll always do good. Like you know, so. Yeah. Now that's uh, it's quite good that you've got people around you that are like that. Because like I'm probably the complete opposite in the way that. I put my stuff up, I might not be completely happy with it, but I've not really got the people around me that would tell me, so I'll probably put it up and I kind of like to, it's kind of difficult because I feel with Instagram, a lot of people would say it's good anyways, like they're not, they're not going to criticise you on a platform, like unless they're like a troll, but no one's got to be trolling me, like, <laughs> so it's kind of, um, I do, it's difficult because I do get a lot of nice comments and even though I know myself that it's not the best uh, but I kind of think that I've taken that for a reason mm. so like I'm not putting up complete crap like I'm not that sort of daft but what I'm trying yeah. to get at is I just think that 
I still like to put up stuff that I'm not completely happy with just to see what reaction I might get. Um, and I'm not really bothered about likes or anything like that. The, I don't know if you, you maybe uh, haven't noticed, but on Instagram, you can take your likes off now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, but like, because you're based in Scotland, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, so for the last couple of years, they removed likes off Ireland. We could not see likes for the last couple of years. I think from 2019. Right, definitely from twenty nineteen. Yeah, it wasn't as much from twenty eighteen, like, but yeah, yeah, they made a change in twenty eighteen with their algorithm, which was really strict, like overnight. Right. Uh, my figures went went from ten thousand views on my stories to two thousand overnight. Yeah. I used to post twice twice a day, yeah, with between five thousand and three thousand likes per post. To now, I now I post like three times a week, yeah. and a really good one will have eighteen hundred likes. But it, have, it has way more engagement. Like there's, not, there's a lot more saves happening. There's a lot more comments happening. Like, you know, before it was just, you know, people were just liking it and getting, you know, just scrolling it. Oh, that's a nice boom. On to the next one. That's a nice boom. On to the next one. Like, yeah. you know, so. Um, but yeah, the, the platform changed loads. And then I was, I thought it was a welcome, a welcome yeah. change to give the option because I like seeing it because it's not even, because um, I used to have to go looking at it. Do you know what I mean? And like the thing, the problem I have is it's, if you can show the, the thing that I thought that they were doing, because I thought they were going to implement it everywhere, because they said initially when they're bringing it into Ireland, it was to prevent suicide on, on young yeah. kids. You know, there was teenagers were killing themselves. Supposedly, this is what was yeah. being said. Like, you know, that there was a high suicide rate because mm -hmm. of. Um, not, I'm not entirely sure. I don't really read much yeah. into any. I just remember. I just remember reading a very, very brief article about it where they were saying that there was a lot of jealousy coming basically you know why why is jessica getting more photos than me i thought i was better looking than her and that kind of stuff and it's not yeah. just there was just girls it was you know young men as well and stuff yeah. like there. um i i thought it would be if you if you were really trying to stop you know suicide that's a there's, there's better ways of combating that instagram than just you know removing the likes exactly. what i thought what i saw was they were changing things to make it stricter on us and it's less obvious if you can't see everyone else's likes. So how can you prove that my page has been throttled if no one else can see the performance? It used to be, like you used to be able to tell, like, you know, if someone bought follows, if they have 100,000 followers yet they can't get 100 likes on a post. Yeah. You know, if there's, if there's smoke to fire. <laughs> but, but at the same time, I used to think that way, but I, I have a couple of friends who are influencers who, you know, have big, massive followings. Um, one of them has like over 80,000 followers, barely ever posts, but is always on stories, is always on lives, gets yeah. about 300, 400 people watching his lives, which is ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. Yeah. But when he posts, he, he, he rarely ever will he break a thousand likes. Huh. Um, where on mine, when it's landscapes, mine probably usually average around a, a, a thousand, and if they get close to two thousand, then it really has hit pretty big. But still, not you, you you do get held back a bit. And then the difference now is everyone's moving to Twitter. Yeah, I seen that, and that was something that maybe is because, like what you're saying, Instagram isn't maybe as effective as it maybe once was. So. Why is everyone moving to Twitter? Is it just because one person's done it that everyone's doing it, or is there no, a, what, no idea? No. Uh, Instagram put up a video two days ago. Done it. Yeah, with the with their uh, they put up an Instagram. Some other fella, some some right. other dude put up, but he's part of the Instagram team because he was right. addressing. It. But he was saying about all the new uh, updates and features and what they're going to be pushing and what they're not. And he said it, well, we're not pushing his photos. And the photographers went, whoa, whoa say what? Oh, I'm going to Twitter because Twitter can get me like 100,000 yeah. reach and they won't throttle me, they won't hold me back. It's just like, but the thing about Twitter, Twitter is you can't go in looking for followers because like yeah. nobody cares about it. Like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, where everyone gives out stink about follow backs and stuff. And I've got a lot of backlash over follow, follow backs over the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, on Twitter, nobody, nobody cares. No, <laughs> like, exactly. Nobody cares at all. It's just like, you know, it's, uh, it's a different, I, I've been on Twitter for a long time and I've never understood it. Yeah. I still don't understand it, but I'm giving it a bit more time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's, I was on it, I was on it all weekend and, I just wanted to take a break from Instagram, just you know, and 
I just on, on it and just saying, and I didn't even know there was this photographer shift until I was online and just saw this yeah. endless stream of just, oh, uh, photographer community, photography community, oh, this, that, this is not like Instagram. And I'm like, why are they all talking again? Why, what's, why am I seeing all these posts? Yeah. Uh, and it was good because I was just seeing them just all, not even chronological order. They were just coming in and it's just like, we think you'd like to read this. We think you'd like to read this. You know, them suggested tweets. And uh, so then I ran into it and went on to the Instagram page because it's funny. If Vodafone or, you know, any kind of, you know, mobile um, network agency, if, they, if their lines go down, they'll tweet about it. They'll put it on Twitter. They won't put it on Facebook. They won't put it on Instagram. They won't go on TikTok. They won't go to YouTube. They'll put it on Twitter. Yeah. If Facebook has something to announce, they put it on Twitter. Yeah. Instagram, they put, everyone just puts it on Twitter. It's, it's like a... I don't know, it's, it's, it's like internet's version of like Fox News or something like that, yeah, but just yeah. less, you know, less one-sided. It's all just, you know, it's like a Switzerland version of a newsreader. <laughs> but, you know, in, in, them, in them kind of regard, totally yeah. neutral, you can say whatever you want. They don't, they don't get into fear. You just put it out there. And if you're in that, if you're on the left or you're on the right, they'll show you more stuff to watch, yeah. whatever you like, you know. But, um, different animal, but, uh, yeah, I've noticed there's a big, there's a big, big switch at the minute. Yeah, uh, like people, people putting up a common tweet I saw yesterday. Anyway, was people going, "Wow, I can't believe I've just hit two thousand followers. It took me four years to do that on Instagram. It's taken me two weeks on Twitter." <laughs> I'll need to go on Twitter then. <laughs> but like Twitter was a, but I, I had spoken to friends at Christmas who one of my one of my mates, um, Stephen Henderson, and he's got nearly fourteen thousand followers on Twitter, and he spent the last six months pushing Instagram. Huh? And now, and now I've told them, well, everyone's now making a pushback on, on Twitter. <laughs> you're 14,000. Hey, you're way ahead of all the rest of them. Like, you know? Exactly. But, like, but even he was saying, it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. It's not, no. it's not like Instagram. It, it does not matter if it likes or if it yeah. follows. Nah, so, uh, so what's going to happen to Duffer's Tuesday tips? And are you, <laughs> is that going on to Twitter or will you continue on Instagram? Oh, no, I'll continue that on Instagram, but I've, I've moved it to... Uh, once every two weeks now. Right. You know, I give it two solid years, two solid years of every Tuesday, uh, of every Tuesday night, and I only missed a couple. And I, I think in total, out of two years, I think I missed total of maybe seven, eight nights. Yeah. There was, no, it would have been more because it took a month off. Right. So I, I, completely, I completely closed my, my Instagram account last year for a full month. So that was four. And then I missed two weeks this year. Uh, six, yeah, probably about eight. Yeah, yeah, it probably is probably about eight. I probably missed about eight right, total, some... out of two years. Yeah, and that's true. Christmas, I was doing tougher shoes and tips through Christmas and everything. Like, uh, <laughs> committed. Uh, so how did that come about? Was that just because you were getting bombarded with questions and you just thought, right, I'm sick of answering DMs, or how did it all start? No, I still answer a lot of DMs. Uh, what it was was I was getting the same questions asked every single day, and it was just it was all it was just beginners, you know what I mean? And it was yeah. just like, and it wasn't a case of like you know because I know there was, you know some of my stories people ask me about gear, and I send them on to the Amazon affiliate yeah. shop, but that only came about after Duffer's Shoes and Tips. Um, but uh, I wouldn't even answer a lot of times in Duffer's Shoes and Tips in the beginning. I wouldn't even answer the uh, the gear related questions. I didn't want to look like I was fishing. Yeah. You know, so that's a one that was a good one. And then I'd send, I might not even send them to an affiliated link. I might not even send them to a link at all. I just tell them, uh, yeah. you know, a lot of times I was just like, oh, like for beginners, what a good camera. So you want one that has decent features. You don't want one that's really, you want one that's going to last. And I find yeah. that the, for some reason, the Sony A6000 still stacks up and it's well old. Yeah. And then there's the Canon 250D. So, you know, I was kind of just like, you know, these kind of questions were coming in all the time. And I'm just like, if I did something about this, this could benefit more people. Yeah. Um, as well as that, just to be totally honest with it as well, because of the throttling that was happening on my page, um, just being held back a lot, I did think that I was losing the stories. Right. And it was such an integral part of my page and if you want to call it the branding. Uh, and I needed, at the time, I needed something to save it. And I was just like, well, if I put in something regular that people can look forward to and get involved with, yeah, maybe. But now it's the opposite has happened now. It actually is, it's having a bad impact on my page. 
Right. Where I can post during the week because of it, because it just you know, there's that many stories. Some nights I could be asked, I could I could be answering fifty questions, and I'll answer them all. And some of them may take two stories. I try not to now. I try to keep them yeah. into a one story answer, um, which is a challenge because fifteen seconds goes back goes by really quickly. Yeah. Um, so it's just it's it's good that I I have a fast accent. So. <laughs> <you know. laughs> uh, yeah. Well, one of the feedback I got before. Some of the feedback I've gotten, one of the feedback, that's not even proper English. Some of the feedback that I've gotten in the past from followers is uh, I, have, uh, I have a Brazilian girl who follows me and she teaches England, uh, English in Brazil. Right. And what she does is she challenges her students to watch my stories, to test them on how they do listening to someone who speaks fast like I do. And she goes, you don't care. You don't hold back. I goes, I'm not turning into Conor McGregor sounding like a robot. So, <laughs> at that least. No, it's at least. If you, can't, if, you, if you didn't know what I just said, it's at least. Uh, uh, That's it. There's no other speed. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's quite... Uh, it is good, that, because... Like, obviously, I'm, I'm fine. I understand most of what you say. Obviously, there's, there's all, there is words that I'll probably say that you probably wouldn't understand and uh, vice versa, but... I think Brazilian people. Nay! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I thought I thought it would be able to throw that in earlier than this, but like. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, to be honest, most people that I've had on have been Scottish, so it's not too bad. What part? Of, what part of Scotland are you from? Uh, I'm from the Scottish border, so close to England, but. It's it's not it's not quite the Glaswegian accent. Um, I was picking that part up there. I was just like, it feels, uh, uh, it doesn't because it doesn't feel as watered down as Edinburgh, but you know, nah, it's um, I don't know. I'm, I don't think that like the borders doesn't really have like a distinct accent compared to maybe Edinburgh or Glasgow or even up north like Aberdeen. Like that's just. That's different up there, but <laughs> it is a uh, yeah. I don't really know. I think I only ever get I'm quite monotone. That's about it. I never get I can't understand you. It's just you don't have any excitement <laughs> or anything like that. It's uh, it's like Andy Murray. Put it that way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, because I cause, yeah, because I'm I'm a border. So just people down the south. Right. I think I sound like I'm from Northern Ireland, or do you think Dundalk is in yeah. Northern Ireland? And it's just like no, but the, you know, and the loud accent is 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 voted one of the most hated accents in Ireland. <laughs> like nearly every county has a very distinct accent. You know, now, right. some of them don't, some of them mold into others. But you know, like when you hear like someone from Derry and you compare them against someone from Belfast, or yeah. compare someone from Cork versus Kerry. And Galway versus like Dublin, like completely. Yeah, you know, for for us, for us, it's like they're from di- they're all from different c- countries, <laughs> might as well. Even how you pronounce words, you're like, I uh, what one of the um, going off topic here, but one of the I seen a clip. I can't remember if they're kayakers or something, but the one did they win a silver in the Olympics? Maybe. Oh, the two boys, the two uh, brothers, they're, they're from Cork. <laughs> their accent absolutely killed oh it's just brilliant like, they're from they're from Skibbereen aren't they they're from no I can't remember but it just I think they're from Skibbereen so yeah. it's West Cork so where they're from is a thick Cork yeah. accent and I would find it tough to understand some not all of it I wouldn't you know I, I, I would get most of what they're saying yeah. some things just you know but the one where they're in the Graham Norton show and then they're <laughs> slagging off the little black standard who is from Kerry, which is which is even faster again. Right. But I wouldn't think that Michael Fassbender has a thick Kerry right. accent, considering he's from Killarney. Yeah. And I think he's very manageable, but they slag him for having a thick <laughs> Kerry accent because um, what you want from Inception, Marion oh. Coulthard, is it? Is it Coulthard? No, she's she doesn't she hasn't got a clue she, what they're saying hasn't a notion in it. I love it. I love watching that video. They are hilarious. But there is you know there's they're just yeah they're just they're like they're like they talk like local lads. That's just uh, local lads having the crack and just oh, forgetting exactly. in front of them. 
Yeah, you should uh, you should send that to the Brazilian teacher. <laughs> They'd have absolutely no chance. Um, aye. Uh, getting back to some photography, uh, just one thing that I love about your page is that it's like you say, like it's so professional the way it looks. And I would say your photographs, they're so like crisp and like, I don't know if I'm just being naive here, but is that a mixture of everything, like lenses, editing, uh, camera, or is that just it, explain to like help me out here? Because it just I don't know. You that don't has, know. I get commented on that all the time, and yeah. I don't have anything different to do. Nah, I'm having a clue. People are like, but your photos are crisp, and I'm like going, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're well focused. I focused. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I I nailed that one. I haven't. I, honestly, I haven't. I I don't do any magic things to no. like. I don't like. I don't. Like it's not like a like a double dip on on yeah. sharpening where you know I edit the photo, add sharpening in Lightroom, do all my edits of Photoshop, yeah. bring it into Lightroom again, and do a double edit. You know, like some people do that. Yeah. I don't do any. I just do a simple. Ed- I do a simple sharpening. I have it on my YouTube video. Yeah. I go into extreme detail on it. Um. I get ripped on that video because it's a rip off of Sarah Dramali, which if you watch the video, I don't even pretend that I don't know where I got it from. I, right. I link his, I link his channel in the description of the video. You know, I just can't, I don't, I just don't think I remember what video I got it from. He yeah. didn't go into detail about it. And I just explained it that I'm doing it the same way and just showing it how I use it in my photos. But uh, what his method is exactly, is exactly what I use, still use to this day with Sony, with the exception that Sony doesn't know of a thing called noise up until nearly 1600 ISO, which is ridiculous. Right. Yeah. Like, I compared my, one of my Fuji, my Fuji files at 100 ISO against uh, Sony at 1250 ISO. And when you clean it, when you, like, there, was, there was noise in the image. Yeah. But for some reason, they have it optimized, it seems, that as soon as you bring in that, the, the the noise cleaning in in you know the, the luminance part of it um in the in Lightroom that that color noise just just that digital noise just goes out the window and you're like yeah. I hardly did it lads where did that go that's so I, I don't have to clean images which means it opens me up for a lot more options now when I'm doing commercial work but um back back in the crisp thing mm, nothing don't know but like I, I know when you're saying like when you're looking at my page and yeah. I hate the grid at the minute. I hate. It. I think it looks just all over the place. I try to, yeah. I try to keep it. Like I, I don't care much for the grid. I'm not one of these ones that's going to post up blue photos to represent yeah. winter and orange photos to represent autumn. Like I think that's a terrible way to run your photos because you're going to edit your photos in that kind of mindset where you should be editing your photos singularly, and yeah. then after the fact is when you curate them. Yeah. So. If you have a whole lot of stuff that is orange, but it's just by chance, you know, you, you went, you went, you went to like, an, you did an autumn shoot, and then you were at a Halloween thing with pumpkins, yeah. or I, I haven't a clue. You're photographing close-ups of, of you know, the um, the body, the, you know, the body mount for Sony is orange, yeah, stuff like that. There, you know what I mean? You've different reasons that the orange is 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 quite strong in the image. That's when I think you put them together and they, they will. But, you know, what's to say? Like, you know, teal and orange, you know what I mean? Like, if you're, in, if, you're in a, if you're in a scene, say you're at a beach and it's quite, you know, it's not quite sunset and you're not facing the sun as well, you might get teal in the sky, naturally, uh, without putting it in. <laughs> you, could, you could mix them photos together so you'd have a nice, yeah. strong autumn image then mixed with a, with a teal. They're contrasting colours they're going to work great. So, you know, there's other ways to work the grid than just doing the typical Peter McKinnon and all the rest of them. You know, I'm only going to post up these photos because it suits the grid for that. You know, you you could think that way too. I'm only going to edit my photos like this. I just, I I think the move away from the curations is going to benefit a lot of people. It's going to, I think it's going to open up people who are are just, who've been just, pigeonholed into the way of the Instagram way of thinking yeah. only shoot vertical only be thinking about your grids yeah. you have to use teal and orange you should be using presets and I'm like going 
buy presets to learn what people are doing and then make up your make your mind up for yourself like you know what i mean it's like look at all the 80 songs with that gated reverb snare drum sound this the phil collins sound that yeah. big the big snare sound if if i said to you like that it's you know that 80s synth sound you know exactly what i'm talking about because everyone did it because it was an accident when genesis were recording Phil Collins used it in the album with In The Air Tonight and then everyone else copied it and it's now associated with that one decade because there was yeah. a whole movement through it but people did it so often that by the 90s they were sick of it. Same with like um, Selective Colour you know with the, Schindler, with the Schindler's List it's all black and white until the girl in the red dress so they used to do that with photos black and white with the red roses yeah. like you know yeah. nobody does that anymore no. Nobody does that. The only people who do do that still are graphic designers because it looks really good for branding. Paddy Power were doing it. And uh, the reason why Paddy Power were doing it, I think, is because I had done an ad for Boyle Sports, right. which didn't go ahead, but Paddy Power had seen it and then they brought it in. It was, we were changing the branding when I was working at Boyle Sports oh, at the time. And one of the lads left the marketing team in Boyle Sports, went to Paddy Power. And a month later, exactly a month later, the whole shops were this black and white with green and we've been doing black and white with blue because boys is, 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 is yeah. the blue and we were like hmm wonder where they got that idea from but like you know that there graphic design works, works fantastic yeah. but in every other sense it's dead and the day that teal and orange dies like do you remember back in 2000 everyone wanted to have that green that the matrix had yeah you wouldn't do it now no you'd be like oh no that's no don't do that because it's just no it's it's overdone like I just don't understand why and yeah maybe because the likes of Peter McKinnon and people like that that have done things like that in the past and continue to do it people will just see that and think that's success or what have you um, or success but um, I just that's something that I've always tried to do is just try to be as true to what I see like with yeah. like the camera and just put it up regardless um, and yeah like it can be frustrating when you see these guys that have got 200,000 followers and they just post the same old crap and it's just it's just the way it is they hit Instagram at the right time maybe or what have you but I don't um, I feel when I first started that kind of bothered me um, I'm more so now I don't really care uh, if I get X amount of followers or that. Obviously, it would be nice, like yourself. You've obviously got a bit of a uh, following in that, but um, I just think, like, if you're posting what you want and it's true to what you see, I think that's more important. And hopefully, oh, yeah. then the followers come, likes come, whatever. But I just that was the same with me. I post up what I like. Yeah. I'm really strict on what I on on the lab on the standard that my photos have to be at, but like. I had seen, um, oh, it was an English photographer, uh, Ben something, I can't remember his name now, and um, he was using Canon 5D. He had a, he had a car accident a number of years ago. Remember right. that? He died his back and he stopped posting for a long time. But his page was was starting, originally was, he'd do a behind the scenes, a gorgeous behind the scenes, then he'd do the, then he'd do the final photo. Then he stopped doing that completely. He only showed the behind the scenes. Right. Um, and he's who influenced me to... Right actually start shooting behind the scenes stuff because I was just like that's unbelievable and it wasn't the fact that he was getting featured left right and centre on every uh, feature page but it was because it's just the way he was photographing them I was just like it looks like like an on location product photography shoot you know and uh, I started doing that just because I loved what he was doing and I was just like well I'm going to do my own thing on that you know I just I, the idea was get a second camera, get a half decent lens and yeah. photograph the behind the scenes and document it. That's the idea that I stole, but the practice that I did, I did it my, my own way, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was editing them photos to the same effort than I was editing the other ones I was putting in the Orton effect and you know, in the, the famous glow and all that that I have. Yeah. And, you know, applying, applying the way that I like to edit photos because the thing the what, what I wanted when I'm doing that is what I wanted to do is I want to rep I want the behind the scenes to represent 
the scene that it's photographing. So the the types of edits that I do to it must reflect what way the behind the you know the final photo. Because I sometimes find that behind the scenes are quite bland and flat. Yeah. So I was just no, I don't want to take. But I was literally as you say, just posting up what I like. I was. Yeah shooting how I like it. I shoot it the way I want to do it. I edit the exact way I want it. If I want a gold sunset or a gold sunrise, I will wait for it. I won't force it into the photo. Yeah. I won't sky replace it into the photo. I do none of that. You know, I don't do any any presets for it. Um, my color treatment, I, I've shown it directly on, on YouTube. I've yeah. put it out exactly how I do it. Um, and it's all about, for me, it's about balancing the, photo, balancing the colors and the luminance. In the same way that you EQ sound, you balance the sound. You boost the you boost the low frequencies. You pull out the mids. You boost the high frequencies. Yes. Same could be said for color. Less less saturation needed in the oranges because you need to boost the yellows because they're the high they're the, the brightest part. If you look at my hand with this light here, yeah, like because of the camera, it's blowing that out. Like you know what I mean. Yeah. So the yellow there is nearly white. So you give that more saturation, get the other one a little bit less and it balances itself out. And suddenly you've just removed one, added an extra, and you just, it feels yeah. way more saturated. And in reality, you've actually taken the saturation out of the main part of color. It's just that you've, you've given room for other parts to express themselves, you yeah. know, to be seen by others. Like, so, um, yeah. I don't yeah. know if that was a question to ask, but it's, it's there. <laughs> I, nah, to be honest, I, I wanted to mention about your um, behind the scenes because... One photograph that I just, it blows my mind every time I see it, is the whiskey, the splash of whiskey. I just, like, because it's got the behind the scenes as well, and, like, it's not just a case of, like, it's a fluke. Like, you've probably put a lot of time and effort into, like, getting that. And, like, don't get me wrong, it, it maybe is a fluke, but, <laughs> like... No. No. I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> Um, no, nah, I'm joking. I, so, it. I would Photoshop it the next time. Uh, it was six I, hours to get that. Them, six hours to get two photos. <laughs> six hours to get two usable photos out of five hundred photos. That, to get them to get them to actually impact properly and have a nice impact. You know, every time it splashed, it splashed the edge of the glass. You had to clean the glass. I had I had two of them glasses, so. Um, and then making sure the glass was in, wasn't moved out of focus. Yeah. Then, as the because that was whiskey, I was pouring out of that, that splash unit. So, yeah. as the whiskey was being dropped in, you know, out of the tube, the pressure level drops. So the PSI changes. So then your mats for the so where you know you get like five half decent splashes. Then suddenly you, they don't even impact anymore yeah. because the PSI has changed and there's no instructions to the things. Mm -hmm. It's just all. It's all just practical practice, and um, they're great units. Like it's a lot easier than having to manually do it. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be the person who has to. Go, <laughs> exactly. You know, like no, I wouldn't want to do that myself. Like, but yeah. uh, and then trigger the camera at the same time at the exact right time that it needs to see the impact. Yeah. Uh, that's really cool. Like, but I, yeah, that would be a case of me seeing what other people do and then thinking, how can I actually do something different with it? And I just was just like, I've never seen it in a glass. I've seen it on top of things, on top right. of coffee cups or, you know, Guinness, you know, Guinness pint, yeah. Guinness fans, you do them ones, the single drop, not the double. Um, yeah. And I was just like, ah, sure, we'll, we'll try that. Like, you know, so um, that's one of my, that is one of my favorite ones oh, yeah. that I have done, like, you know, really good. Yeah, I don't, uh, like you say, six hours, like, it is worth it in the end, obviously, but uh, imagine you didn't get it, <laughs> like you say, just Photoshop. <laughs> Yeah, no. The next time, the next time around, for anyone who wants to try and do that, just just get a basin of water and get your droplet, and then make sure it's the same color. Just use whiskey. Just use whiskey. Make sure it looks right, and then just Photoshop it into the into the photo thereafter, like because it's um, yeah, just very time consuming. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, if you can get it, or use a white glass. Just use like use a wine glass. Yeah. It wouldn't won't splash as much. It's just because it was a narrow, with you know, proper whiskey drinkers, you know, whiskey tasters glass that's why you know it's just um but yeah no but like it's not the only photo that's taken a long time to get no, no. Sundial, my sundial photo the 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 snare drum photo the one that was you know uh, i don't know if you saw on the exploded view one yeah. that took over 10 hours to set up like and then i had to photograph it and all the edits and all that there like but i wanted it i wanted it shot in camera see the, the problem with me is 
because I came from a graphic design background, I know I can do this in Photoshop. Oh, yeah. For me, it's it's not as a good to, it's it's not as good for me to brag I can do it if I did it all through Photoshop. For me, it's like it's just like you know what? Yeah, it's cool I can do it, and people know ah oh, you did that in Photoshop. Yeah, but it's better if I can turn around and say no, 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 I, that's all in camera, and there's the behind the scenes to prove it. And they're like, whoa, hold on, now that's different. Yeah, that takes it's extra effort, and some people may say, you know, like if you're doing that for a company, they're not gonna they're not gonna pay you for that time. So that's when you do do it through Photoshop, and you do sep you do separate the elements out, and you photograph it and position it in the way that you want. Yeah, uh, but if you want if you want to be able to, the only thing is like to get it realistic looking, you need to do it realistically. Yeah. So you know, now I have the experience from that. So. Again, if I was to do now, I'm going to be truthful. If I was to do it again, I would, I would do it all again. I would do it set up again, like just because, just because the behind the scenes is just yeah unreal. Like you know, sells oh. it more. Yeah, almost. Would you say, like obviously you prefer probably the end result, but is it more satisfying, like seeing the behind the scenes photos and having people maybe comment on that than the real photo? Do you know what I mean? I don't know. It used to annoy me. Um, Back when, so I used to on my page back in like 2017, at the height of it, at the height of the growth and stuff, like, um, I would post at one o'clock in the afternoon the behind the scenes photo to get people anticipated for the final photo at eight o'clock that night. And I would get like, so coming up to, I'd say around, around October, September, October 2017, again, you know, the growth was really fast at that yeah. stage. You're talking like, um, I could have been growing a couple of hundred people a day and definitely, you know, it was 10,000 in, in, in three months, like, you know, so uh, it was fast growth. And so there was a lot of engagement on the page. Um, and I would get between 3,000 and 5,000 likes on the, 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 the behind the scenes. Yeah. Bit sick, yes, on the behind the scenes. And then I might only get 2,000 or 2,500, 3,000 yeah. max on the final photo and it used to be like oh, come on lads you can't be, you can't be valuing the behind the scenes more what well, people do that's the that's yeah. the reality of it look at all the behind the scenes uh feature pages there are now they used to be camera gear pages now they're all now they're all behind the scenes and they all want to have yeah. a video and you want they want you to walk around with it with your phone and stuff and really show it more in depth than just having a nice you know um nice you know product kind of photos of, of, yeah. of the behind the scenes they now want video to go with it too and they want as much shown as they exactly how you did it like you know um yeah. it's, it's a great way for other people to learn as well um you know i i learn quite visually so if i can see it i can i can yeah. i can reverse engineer pretty well in my head that i can figure out how to do things and i've literally learned in some cases going oh hold on he did or she did he or she did this so I didn't. Oh, I never thought to do it that way. Hmm. Huh. Take a note of that and do that next time. And, you know, just simple, just a quick thing. Just seeing the the, the light position, or um, you know, if you if you if you've never seen how you get the gradient on the on the whiskey bottle, even though I've been told now that that's a that's a dated thing to do. That's that's not the done practice. Yeah. I think it still is in Ireland anyway. The market still is looking for that. In other countries, that's not so much. Um, I think in England, it's not as done as heavily anymore. But you know, if if no one's ever seen that before, they would not know to put your light into a strip box and then put the strip box in behind the diffusion panel and then off access it. So that means the brightest part is a, is where the two of them meet. So yeah. then it fades out, gets your gradient. Um, so yeah, so like, but the I love seeing behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. I have. I have a DVD collection of uh, one of them limited edition collections of James Bond, and it's a double disc, and it's you know it's it's behind the scenes of all the James Bond movies. So, you know, like how did they do that stunt and Doctor No and they flipped the car and all that there? You know what I mean? Like you got to do all that. Like, do you remember the TV show in the nineties? How did they do that? No. Do you know? Oh, unbelievable show! But I remember one of the nights on it. Uh, it showed loads of different things on it. You know, it could be yeah. anything at all. Um, like it could be, it could be like how did they build a bridge, some sort of engineering feat. But this was prime time Saturday night watching. How did they do that? Yeah. And um, one of them was showing how did they, how did they do true lights, the part with the jet. How did they do all that? Uh, I don't know. Nowadays, it's you know that wouldn't be a big deal. The Mandalorian would be the big deal nowadays. Yeah. We're doing that like. No, I think that's it. 
but it's, it's the same with obviously landscape. I watch a lot of landscape videos on YouTube and I feel like no one really, it's not like no one cares about the final image, obviously, like that's what they're seeing, but they want to know how the person got that. So that's why all these YouTubers that I have watched that are probably so successful is because they're showing their process. Um, and yes, yeah, it obviously works for you as well on your page. But there's also this, there's also this thing that's come from social media as well. Is you can't be credited for it being such a good photo without the validation of it, which is which is disappointing in the same right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it should be, yeah, it it should be there on its own. You know, it yeah. should be just like you know, yes, you went to them links. We can see it because of the yeah. quality photo that it is but you know nowadays it's you know they need the validation to see oh did you really set up a 600 mil to, to, to get that photo or did you do this did you do that or I can't believe you didn't use ND filters or whatever like you know what I mean yeah. uh, you need that validation yeah aye that's true aye <laughs> nah you're right I suppose it is more that isn't it it's just Obviously, no one comments on my photos, so I'm all right. But I suppose when you've got when you've got a bit of a following, eh, it's, eh, <laughs> I suppose you need to. Um, but then you shouldn't have to justify. That's just the way the world is now, though. Eh? It's it's just yeah. Well, I think it. I do think it's kind of moving back to that where people are just getting annoyed with having the validated. We're yeah. going no, let's take it for granted. That it is what it is. Yeah. But there's so much, so much messing around with sky replacements and stuff like that there. Yeah. Uh, like, fair enough, you want to do it. But, like me and you are graphic designers, right? Mm -hmm. So, we can see the argument as to, it's not necessarily photography. Yeah. Because me and you going to Shutterstock and getting a nice photo of London skyline and then getting a nice sunset from who knows where, you know what I mean? The back end of Australia. Yeah. Getting into photos and properly blending them together and colour correcting them and then colour grading them. Are we are me and you photographers in that right? No, we're still designers. Yeah. It's it's art, digital art, it's just not yep. photography. Yes, there are two photos. They have to be, because it's called photo manipulation. But it's not necessarily photography. And yep. that's I I personally draw the line in that. Yeah, I will do exposure blending but I will not do if I go to Giants Causeway tomorrow and it's an overcast day the photo I present to you is an overcast day I just control the lighting better when I exposure blend because I don't need the, I don't need expensive ND grad filters yeah I can hear it in Photoshop because I can put the two of them together and get the exact same results <laughs> but it's still the same conditions yeah. if I want a sunset I'll wait till September half eight in the evening because I photographed it then and I got a gorgeous one. You know what I mean? So, you yeah. know, I have I have the golden, I have the red sky, actually not even golden sky, I have, the, I have a red sky sunset from Giants Causeway. Happy with it. Don't need to go back there again for a long time until I want another one. Yeah. Or something like that. If I, if I have something else, but the time being, I'm quite happy with what I have from Giants Causeway because I got the conditions I want. Now, it was a fluke that it was the night, my first night going there to photograph it. But, yeah, I, I wait years to get the right yeah. condition. Yeah, no, nah, it's a, that is one thing that, and it maybe is, like you say, because we're graphic designers or what have you, but it's just some, I've had people on previous and they've said that they've taken skies out or they've taken complete objects out or what have you, and it's not that, like, I'll still clean up things, like, to a certain extent, because I still think that that's not classed as maybe completely changing your image. Um, you're just enhancing I, it. Type I took horrible power lines. I power lines like yeah. my, 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 my fingers are, are, and they're going right across the front of the yeah. image. Complete distraction. It took me that. ages to get rid of them, but it cleaned the image up. Yeah, exactly. I know. Um, so now I think, like that's one thing I just, I struggle to, I, could, I just can't do it. Like I feel like I'm cheating. Like that, that's just how I feel. Like oh, everyone's different, that's fine. But I don't know if it is just because off like you say being a graphic designer you just because you can do that and it's two different images it's not a photograph i, I don't know but I, i'm the same and you know like yeah, i know any, anyone can do it yeah ah, exactly literally anybody can do it like i i when i back to when i worked with boy sports i was the lead designer for them and um 
one of the one of the things I used to do was social media posts. So I would get stuff that was to be made viral. So we were designing stuff for Vine back in the day. <laughs> we, we, oh, we were doing horrendous, horrendous head replacements on like <laughs> the scenes of Wolf of Wall Street with like, you know, whatever football players were kind of at each other's throats. We were yeah. just putting funny videos, point, pointless stuff. But one of the things I remember getting was uh, McGregor was after slagging off the other UFC fighters because they were all coming out dressed in suits. And it was like Cowboy Cerrone and all the others. And um, it, it came to me, you know, the head of content came to me and he was like, right, we want, to, we want you to do this. We're going to give you two hours to get it done. Uh, we want to post this because it's just been said. Uh, or we said, we, they wanted to be the first ones online with it. Yeah. We want you to get the poster of Anchorman and replace all the heads with UFC fighters. And we want Ron Burgundy to be Conor McGregor. We don't care who else is what, you know, you can, whatever there. But it's because McGregor, we want to have it like it's the scene where in Anchorman they go shopping for suits. Because McGregor was slagging all the lads that the only reason why they're wearing suits yeah. is because he had started that. So, yeah, so I had to get photos that suited the angles that I wanted their heads to be facing in, then had to colour correct it to match it in, then colour grade it, and then to give it that final finished Hollywood look, you have to hit them all with Orton effect. And I hit it, and yeah, it's still one of my best edits. Yeah. That and the um, the lead image that they had for the McGregor Mayweather fight, yeah. we went around looking for a photo. The hardest part to find for this photo was we wanted a picture. Now, this was being promoted a month and a half ahead of the fight right and we wanted we wanted to be showing mcgregor punching mayweather mm -hmm. and it was so difficult to get a decent photo of yeah. mayweather actually taking a punch <laughs> to the At the, i ended up using it so when you see the image and it's it's, it's on my website it's on a few of my youtube videos yeah. um that's actually canelo right. that's actually connected so that that punch the the, the glove itself yeah and Impact in Mayweather is actually a photo of Canelo connecting with um, with Floyd Mayweather Jr. And then the McGregor is McGregor's throwing an overhand hook to uh, Nate Diaz, I think, from the first fight. No. Um, and that's what we use. And actually, the if I remember correctly, I think the McGregor one was got off Shutterstock or Press Association, but right. it was. It was paid for and it was a really high quality image. But the other image was just got off Google and it was really crap. So we actually had to add in noise to the other one so the two of them didn't look off from each other. So there was a lot of and then and that was made into a billboard. Yeah. No, it looks, that was, I, uh, seen it. It looked quality. Yeah, I, I think the, the the photos I took the photos on my phone. I couldn't believe it. I was just I, I went up to it. I, I usually never really looked into much stuff that I did with them. Yeah. But when I did that, I was just like, now the only thing is it was out of my hands as to what the text was going to be. When I had done it, I had done my own design of the text and I suggested um, power beat speed. Uh, uh, what was it? Um, uh, what's it? Uh, precision beats power time and beat speed. Right. So that's, that, that was what he said, yeah. which is if you've, if you've ever done any kind of martial arts, it's one of the first things they teach you is you don't have to be the most powerful person there. Yeah. You know, like a kernel a punch is always uh, twice as powerful as throwing a big massive haymaker. If someone's throwing a haymaker and you just throw a wee dinky one, and you uh, catch them right, the ones that they don't see coming, and you catch them in the jaw, knock them clean out. You're using their momentum against them. So when I, when I heard that quote, I was just like, oh. <laughs> I was just like, yes. And that was what he said after he knocked out Aldo. So I thought it was, you know, totally. But their their problem was, the marketing crowd was one the people who were deciding it didn't watch uh mma they were football fans right. and they were like yeah but he said that like two years ago right. we want something up to date and i was just like well yeah. so what the, i i'm not I, I never was a fan of the text that they used yeah the image loved it the image yeah. loved it. and it just goes to show you don't need for billboards you don't need uh yeah. you don't need you know 65 megapixel cameras do you know that was a three that that was three thousand pixels at seventy two DPI. We put it into Photoshop. We put it back up to three hundred DPI. Boom! Actually, we didn't. We dropped it down to one fifty. 
Because right. billboards. Uh, billboards even actually get printed at 72. Because yeah. your, your viewing distance is, my, is, is ages away. Yeah. So the bigger it is, the, the further you're supposed to be standing away from it. So when you get up close, they're as blurry as anything because you know the pictures yeah. are absolutely huge. Mental. But now nah, it was a. I can I can see why you got out of your car or you walked past it and stopped because I would have taken a photo if it was my work as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I, I took a trip up to Dublin to to go look uh, at it. it was just, I was like, oh, I know where it is. I'll go have a look at this building. Yeah. And, right, and, and it's right over a Paddy Power shop. Yeah. <laughs> Class. Um, so yeah, if, let's just say, obviously our backgrounds with graphic design, I feel like that helps maybe a little bit in photography if you're starting out. So do you have any advice for someone that has no maybe creative sort of background to get into photography? What would be your sort of best piece of advice apart from pick up a camera? <laughs> yeah. Hey. Some will disagree with this, but it's learn the rules. Right. Like, like photography is not like a like a musical instrument. You know what I mean? Musical instruments, physical. You have to learn. You know. Yeah. You know, muscle memory and everything. Get there. Like, and uh, there's still things twenty years later. Drumming, I can't do double bass. Really fast yeah. double bass, still can't do. It. But with photography, there's there's rules. There's compos there's compositional rules that are there long before photography was there. They're, you know, they're yeah. there since. You know, the Renaissance days or Renaissance, however you want to pronounce it. Um, so you know, like the rule of thirds. If you can, if you can learn the fundamentals yeah. on how not not you know not learning how to expose that can come later, but actually how to, you know, actually orchestrate a photo and tell a story, and knowing where to position things and being able to see it, you know, being able to imagine it. If I move two feet to the left, this composition becomes so much better. Yeah. Move two feet to the left, drop half a foot, and it looks it looks like a completely different scene because you've taken into the factors of perspective and what is you know the hierarchy of things. So if you learn like the, the most important is the rule of thirds. Yeah. I stick I stick really strict to the rule of thirds to this day. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if it's a gorgeous sky, put it in the bottom on the lower third. If it's a horrible sky, put it put the horizon to the to the top third. The only time I don't there's only a couple of times that I actually break the rule and it's when I'm looking at stuff that has a reflection. Right. I put the horizon in the middle because I want that, um, do you know that butterfly, you know, that ink, that ink art, you know, the, uh, yeah, yeah. So you, you paint one side, you fold the sheet over and now you have a butterfly. That's what you want. You want, you yeah. want your photo to look like ink art and that's what you should be thinking about when you're doing it. So you want to have an equal space of the top of the building above the horizon the same is shown below it so you know space left for there and then the other one is when i'm doing actually a uh, commercial work for companies and i'm thinking more of a graphic designer yeah. so where i would place myself so if it was this video here if i was to the one third spitting spitting my face in half here yeah. i'd actually go a little bit more further to the left where i'm not actually my head is within the, t the one third yeah. and that brings you into what's called the golden ratio or the fibonacci spiral and you can you can view that on Photoshop, you can view that on Photoshop to see what that's about, but that'll get you into that because that gives you enough space to have the subject to the one side and enough space for text thereafter. So if you're doing work for companies, and I get it, I get it said all the time. Companies are like, you know, they've gone to photographers in the past, and they're like, yeah, we get all this, we get all this stuff. Uh, Vanguard say it to me all the time, like they get they get behind the stuff, behind the scenes stuff sent to them, and they can't use half of it for the marketing because the tripod's put in the middle of the photo. And they've no room to put text anywhere. So they've done a lot of photos up. And so I never, any photos I send to Vanguard, it's on the left side, it's on the right side. It's usually on the right side because we read from left to right. Text yeah. on the left, image on the right. Yeah. If it's a story, put the text on the top and the image on the bottom. So, but yeah, I know for any beginners, forget about Lightroom, forget about presets, learn to actually compose because it's the hardest thing to learn. You can learn everything else after that because it's just moving sliders. Yeah, you know, once you learn how 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 far to take the the highlights down, you know, minus, you know, you you go to minus thirty looks fine, minus four, and then you know minus forty, and then the sun starts looking kind of weird and hunky. Yeah. And you bring it back a little bit, and you still have a little, that little bit of glow, but you can see you can see the, the circle of the sun. That there stuff is just you know you can that's a visual thing you can see that, but actually, you know, you can't edit your way into having a good photo. You've either taken a good photo or you haven't. Yeah. And that's the problem I find with these presets being sold to people. They're being sold in the fact that 
do you want to make your photos look better? Use a preset. And I'm like, oh, do you want to learn how to, do you want to make your photos better? Learn how to take a photograph. <laughs> and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's seen as quite a harsh thing to say, but you know what? It's true. Some, people, some people just need a good dose of reality yeah. given to them, you know, and a bit of honest truth. Yeah. Your photo doesn't work because your photo is crap. Yeah. Do you know? And, and in some cases, it's not that. You know, maybe it's just a case of like, you know what? If it had been moved just a little bit here, a little bit there, boom. Like, I have to laugh at some of the comments that you see on, on, on Instagram. And as you say as well, you know, people aren't willing to give feedback. If you want a reality check, put your photos on F-stoppers. Oh, yeah. They are, they take no prisoners. And they are not impressed by 90% of the photos that are put there. 90% of the photos that are put on, on, on F-stoppers, they will critique the life out of. Yeah. Very few are they ever impressed by. And that's not the people who run the, yeah. the website. That's the average photographer who's on it. They're extremely hard to please. Yeah. The, the standard is so high. That's why I love getting featured on, on pages like ISO 1200 magazine because they don't cut corners. You're either good enough to get on it or you're not. They don't, as far as I know, they don't actually do paid promotions. Oh. They do none of that. No, I don't think so. I have a funny yeah. feeling. I actually think I know who's running the page. I, I, I've, I've never actually gone to ask if he actually does run the page, but I think there's a, I think there's, there's about three different photographers I think run, but I don't know what I don't want to say. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, but, the, but even the photographers, I think it is their standard of work is ridiculous and they also have high followings because of that. Like. Yeah. I think, uh, especially for me starting out, I don't get me wrong, it's always nice to hear nice things, that's fine. But um, yeah. because I'm just starting out, I don't, like, I know they're not great. So it's kind of, like, the only way to get better is to get criticism. And, like, not many people can take it. I think that's probably the issue. Um, no, they can't. But, they don't know how to take it. They're yeah. like, uh, they've been really coddled their whole life. And you're like, yeah. oh, you're doing great, you're doing great. But <laughs> one constructive criticism is yeah. worth 10,000 likes. Oh, yeah. And 10,000, that's a great photo. That's a great photo. Yeah. But how is it, how does it become, a, a, go from a great photo to an awesome photo or, you yeah. know, that's a lifetime achievement kind of photo. Yeah. I mean, I, that's extremely subjective at the same rate. You know, but how do you, how do you better yourself than yeah. other people? It's just, but there's two things there, you know, you have to be willing to, to take it. Yeah. And the person has to be willing to, you know, accept the fact that they're not there to be mean. You know, yes, they can take it, take it there. But if they're seen to be just, you know, nearly trolling, yeah, you know, it's not constructive. Then you know what I mean? Like, it's not constructive. No, um, I just don't think that. I don't think you get anything like personally from from that at all. It's no, like the only person, yeah, sorry. The Sorry, I know, just the, the only person who gains from that is the person trolling with yeah. the comment. They're like, yeah, I feel good about myself. <laughs> no one else does. Nobody else does. Everyone has a bad taste in the mouth afterwards. But if you go and you're able to say, do you know, do you know, Mark, like uh, your, your sundial, uh, one constructive criticism on, on the sundial photo was that it was over, there was the difference between the day and the night was, there was too heavy of a contrast. But then I was just like, it's an, it's an, it's an image literally blended between day and night that's exactly what i wanted <laughs> you know what i mean so like in in some cases you know it was it was a good constructive criticism but yeah. at the same time it was kind of a little bit ridiculous like what do you want from me one was shot at midnight one was shot at seven in the morning and I go home take the tripod down and set it up in the exact same spot like you know but yeah. you know it's high from all them efforts there yeah but like there's other things as well like i posted up a um, ice cream photo last week and someone was just like the bricks in the background is too much texture it's kind of it's a little bit it's a little bit distracting which you know if you read into that yeah you could just you could um you could open up the aperture a little bit more mm -hmm. now the only thing to open up the aperture is yes you're blurring the background out more but now not as much of the ice cream is in focus yeah so then that leads into the question of should you do focus stacking to get the ice cream into more focus and blow out the background more. 
And I'm just like, well, the client wanted that. So <laughs> I was happy enough with it. They had it, yeah. it had a mood. I was more concerned with the mood that it was having and the lighting than, it, you know, was it distracting? Yes, some of the images, some of the ice creams fell into the background, but other ones didn't. Some of them completely lifted because they were yeah. nice, you know, like, you know, the ones with the, I found the, the ones with the caramel in them and all that there, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the Twix ones and the, uh, Kinder Brenner ones look nice off the background, but the arrow, the mint arrow ones, kind of fell into the background a bit, like you know. So. Yeah. But then, as like you say, is obviously the client or customer was happy, so it's fine taking that on board. You can always try stuff the next time. Like, there's nothing wrong with people saying things, but it's like you say, it's the person that is obviously on the receiving end, whether they can take it or not. Um, and that, and that's it. It's just, and I think. It's difficult because even if I put out an image on Instagram, it'd probably be different for yourself with your followers. But if I put something out and I ask, like in my back, like the little description, say, can someone please give me any feedback, good or bad? No one will even read that. They'll just literally put on oh, a nice image or what have you, and that's it. So, like, is that when you put stuff on your page, obviously you put loads of different things up. Do you see yourself getting different people commenting or is it similar people all the time? Because obviously I, I just get similar people. But uh, I like the first part of your comment there because like, uh, if I asked in the caption for people to give me an honest opinion, I'd never get it. Yeah. They'd feel, it, they didn't, they, they'd feel like they wouldn't have the balls to do it. Yeah. But then my friends will DM me. Yeah. I'll get a DM from my friends, yeah. But um, yeah, it's always it's there. Just yeah, there's there's just a few people who do comment regular. Mm -hmm. So we've got the regulars. So they're in. And then when it comes to questions and stuff like that, there, it's usually it, it, it's usually a variety of different people. Yeah. Um, and some photos get some photos don't even get it at all. Yeah. Uh, it's taken me a while now to you know to get my following that they're a, a lot more accepting into what I post. You know, in the beginning when I started posting up headshots and some product stuff and all that there, nobody cared. No. So, good for you. No. Good for you. Hey, <laughs> hey, good for you. You're doing that. We still like your landscape stuff. Go back to that. Yeah. But you know, when I started pushing on, I did a story and I'm going to actually do another one now soon enough. I, I might actually just do it as a reel where I did a story um, to promote myself to, to show that I'm going into commercial photography and um, I know Kevin Hennessy from the, tri the, the Tripodcast, the podcast here in Ireland. Uh, he commends me for this all the time. He loves it. He mentioned at the time I was on their podcast um, that uh, I put up this series of stories and each one said, I am a photographer. The first one said, I am a photographer and it showed all landscape photos. Yeah. And the next one showed all products and I went, I am a photographer. Then the next one showed headshots and I went, I am a photographer. Then at the very end, I went, the only title that I care about is photographer. The rest, I don't care. Yeah. So, you know, the way, like, you know, everyone's, like, they're looking for the expert in headshots and they're looking for the expert in right. product, landscapes and stuff to get there, you know. But I'm getting a good bit of work because huh? I can do them all. And I've gone out and I've tried to really, I'm not going to say I've mastered them, but I do give it a, as good a stab as I can and do try and perfect it as best I can. So you're not getting what you sometimes see is kind of like, yes, this person definitely only does headshots the odd time, or this person yeah. dabbles a little bit of product photography. There's just, you know, I, I don't, I don't, if I, if I can't get it to a, a pretty good standard, then, you know, I don't, I don't try to offer it too often. Like wedding photography, I don't have much interest in it. So no offers. I've, I've only ever done it once and I just found it a bit of a faff and I'm just like, yeah, it's not for me. You know, and if I was to offer it now, I would be average at it because I don't really have the push for it. Where headshots, I love doing headshots and stuff, you know, but um, but getting your followers to that openness of variety, it's tough. You have to accept yeah. that nobody's going to comment, nobody's going to like it, but you are putting it up for you because yeah. it's your portfolio. Oh, exactly. Like you, exactly, yeah. So you have to at one point not care about the grid because it's yeah. the overall picture. It, you're playing the long game. Yeah, and the long game's very hard to play. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, how's your? Uh, obviously, you mentioned your work and stuff. How's that going so far since you went self-employed? 
quiet. <laughs> uh, I don't believe that. <laughs> Uh, oh no, there is a spe- with COVID. With COVID, oh, yeah. it's huge, it's huge. But the nature of this business as well is feast or famine. Yeah. You know, like you'd be bombarded all last week, full, absolutely yeah. full. And uh, but this time, but this week here, because of all that work last week, the worst thing you can do then is fill this week because when do you do your edits? Yeah. So this this week is is editing, and then I have a bit of extra time free so I can get back to doing some YouTube videos. Yeah. getting some because i like as i said before we started this yeah. i have the um i have the zyls sitting here ages i have a yc onion motorized slider here ages uh, i have microphones to test i have a whole lot of stuff that i haven't had time to test and uh, so i want to make time this week so yeah yeah it's just the time management stuff um i used to be ridiculous when i first started you know was doing the graphic design 40 hour a week and you're finding your own time to do stuff and you know, I would edit because I don't sleep till two or three in the morning. So I would edit and typically go to bed. But the problem was I would go to bed still thinking about editing. And I would have, I don't have great sleeps as it is. Yeah. But I'm trying to get better at it. So I have a rule now that I don't edit after midnight. Uh, no, quite right. Um, I don't know if it's a graphic designer thing, but uh, I'm up pretty late as well. I just, and it, it probably is the whole, like your brain just doesn't switch off. Like it's just always on the move and, it's kind of, you're always thinking of, oh, if I can change that or I'll do that. Or it's just, uh, it's just constant. But I know yeah. what you mean. I'm not quite three in the morning. <laughs> I, I, you know, I worked in nightclubs. I started, I started working in nightclubs when I was 15. And then I got into playing in bands. Mm-hmm. And then I started traveling around the country playing in bands. And the way I looked at it was, if I'm used to going to bed at 10 or 11 o'clock at night, you know, where am I going to be on a Saturday night when I don't start playing until 11 or 12 at night? Or yeah. there's a venue up in Letterkenny, you don't play until one o'clock. Yeah. You set up at half 10 at night. You don't play until one. You finish at three. By the time you get it into the car, it's four o'clock in the morning and the 24-hour shop doesn't even have sandwiches. You know what I mean? <laughs> you've, got the cho- you've got the choice of stale donuts and LucasAid and coffee to get you a two-hour boring drive home. <laughs> so what do you do? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, uh, so I had to train myself to that and I've trained myself really well for it and I just can't get out of it. Yeah. And it's, I find that the, the COVID has got me worse. I had, it, I had it down to one o'clock, half twelve, one o'clock and now I'm five past, ten past three. I go to bed at two and I'm, I'm on the phone playing chess trying to get myself tired. <laughs> and my rating, my rating in chess has dropped dramatically because I keep falling asleep during matches. <laughs> I fell asleep. I, no joke, no joke. I fell asleep the other day with it in my hand. I dropped the phone on my face. Oh, yeah. I landed on the big old schnozzle here, like you know, <laughs> but a broke the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, but it woke me up. It woke me up, and I still, I still won the game. Uh, just in time. Just yeah, in yeah. time. Check, mate. Yeah. Uh, I saw. I could talk to you for hours, honestly. It's just one of those things that I'll need to get you on again. Um, yeah. Definitely, because there's so much that I can ask you, and no doubt I'll probably still keep DMing you. Um, like everyone else. Like everyone else. <laughs> too, that's, that's the one thing I love about Instagram is when you're a business page or a creator's page, you can have two, you have two DM followers. Oh. You've, you've, um, uh, Primary like and in general, general yeah. you know, so I have people separated into primary in general. You'll get upgraded now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I don't, didn't expect anything different. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now nah, it's been great. Um, one final question I ask every person is if you could take one last photograph ever of anything, what would it be? Sunset at Roach Castle. Love it. Nice. Love it. But, but the, yeah, go with that. We, we, I, had my de- I had extra details there. I was like, going, <laughs> Sunset at Roach Castle, middle of April. <laughs> middle of April, 24th of April only. Nice. Or, or if it was uh, maybe maybe the 29th of September. Because <laughs> of the two, because yeah. the movement. Yeah. Yeah, Roach Castle, my favourite place to go. Quality. 
Nah, good answer. Um, I appreciate you coming on, and thanks okay. obviously for your time. Um, hopefully, it's not been a waste of your time, and hopefully, you've enjoyed it. No, no, good crack here. Good crack here. Thanks very much. Lovely, 100%. Cheers for having me. Okay.